Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuan. Today, let's talk about Yuran the Guizhou Ichthyosaurus, a fascinating ichthyosaur. As an early ichthyosaur, it lived, as the name suggests, in the oceans of Guizhou, China, during the Triassic. Its classification has long been controversial. Initially, it was described as an undefined ichthyosaur, and was named Guizhou Ichthyosaurus. Then, it was reassigned as a species of Shastasaurus. Members of this group could be described as a mixed assemblage, as many large ichthyosaurs were all assigned to this group for a time, including the Guizhou Ichthyosaurus. However, more recent and detailed studies, along with more complete fossil specimens, have revealed significant differences between it and Shastasaurus. Therefore, Guizhou Ichthyosaurus has been separated from Shastasaurus and accepted as a distinct genus. Guizhou Ichthyosaurus was huge and could reach up to 5 meters long. Although it pales in comparison to those massive 10 or 20 meter long creatures, it is still quite impressive. Let's first take a look at its overall shape. It appears slender and elongated, with a rotund trunk. We now know that the body of this animal had a lot of fat, so we reconstructed it more like a whale, or dolphin with a plump, rounded physique. Its flippers were exceptionally long, which is a typical feature of this animal. Many dinosaur museums in China display specimens of Guizhou Ichthyosaurus. One of its most salient characteristics, the elongated flippers, especially the front flippers make it quite recognizable. Its head is another worth mentioning feature. In the initial discovery of Guizhou Ichthyosaurus, the exact appearance of its skull remained unknown for a long time, so its head was used to be shorter than current reconstructions suggest. Later, more complete specimens revealed that its snout was actually slender and elongated. Viewed from above, you can see from this model that the rear part of its head is much wider than the front snout. Although the snout was slender, the bones were sturdy. Inside its mouth were numerous smaller teeth, each about only this size. Its skull was quite long, possibly as long as this, with teeth densely packed in the jaws. Though the teeth were small, they were not thin, each one was robust and appeared quite sharp. People once believed Guizhou Ichthyosaurus had a slender and narrow snout, and was a less formidable predator. Therefore, it was long thought to have fed on ammonites or small fish. However, recent research has provided new insights, especially after the discovery of a Guizhou Ichthyosaurus specimen with the remains of a Sinpusaurus lodged in its gut. This particular specimen demonstrated that the Guizhou Ichthyosaurus was only 5 meters long, yet the Sinpusaurus in its stomach measured nearly 4 meters, indicating it preyed on large animals. Even more surprising, the Sinpusaurus wasn't swallowed whole, but had been torn into pieces before being consumed. Its body was broken into several segments, which the Guizhou Ichthyosaurus then swallowed. This is quite unusual because marine animals like ichthyosaurs lacked limbs, they had no hands or feet, so it's difficult to imagine how they could process such large prey. We know that terrestrial dinosaurs, like T. rex, could use their feet to hold the prey, and then tear it apart with their jaws. Similarly, crocodiles employ a death roll, gripping onto flesh and spinning to rip off chunks. But how did Guizhou Ichthyosaurus, as an ichthyosaur, managed to dismember another fast-swimming animal with its small teeth in the ocean. This remains an uncommon event. Currently, paleontologists speculate that Guizhou Ichthyosaurus may have had a powerful bite. As mentioned earlier, despite its slender appearance, its snout was quite robust. Furthermore, Sinpusaurus itself was a slimmer, snake-like animal. Guizhou Ichthyosaurus likely used its powerful bite to crush the prey's bones, and then violently tore it apart in the water like this. I think it may have also slammed its prey against rocks or other objects, until the prey broke into smaller chunks, similar to how modern orcas or certain whales handle their food. For example, when sharks capture their prey, they bite down gently, 
and use their two rows of teeth to saw through it. After sinking teeth into their catch, some whales slam the prey against rocks or thrash it in the water, and then swallow it after it has been torn into smaller pieces. This behavior suggests that Guijo ichthyosaurus was a ferocious animal, not as docile as its appearance might imply. Moreover, based on the specimen that died from choking on a Simpusaurus, we can also infer that Guijo ichthyosaurus might be an exceptionally greedy creature. Now, let's examine its entire body. The dorsal fin has been a highly debated feature among early ichthyosaurs. To date, we haven't found any definitive evidence proving or disproving its existence. For a long time, paleontologists believed that early ichthyosaurs, including Guijo ichthyosaurus and even Shastasaurus, did not possess dorsal fins, which explains why most reconstructions depict them without this feature. However, a significant finding in recent years has challenged this belief. An early ichthyosaur known as Myxosaurus was discovered with clear skin impressions, showing a well-developed dorsal fin. This evidence has somewhat altered our understanding of the origin of dorsal fins in these creatures. It is now generally believed that early ichthyosaurs may have already evolved dorsal fins. Since their tails had already developed like that of a shark, it's definitely possible that they also had dorsal fins resembling many other marine animals. Additionally, new fossil evidence indicates that Guijo ichthyosaurus was an extremely rapid swimmer, meaning it would have needed well-developed structures to maintain balance in the water. Therefore, we speculate that it likely had a dorsal fin in some form, and we've incorporated this possibility into this model. The tail of Guijo ichthyosaurus was relatively short, a bit like that of later ichthyosaurs. Like many ichthyosaurs, its caudal vertebrae curved downward here, forming a crescent-shaped caudal fin. In the past, it was widely believed that early ichthyosaurs had longer lower lobes and shorter upper lobes. However, recent fossil evidence suggests that they may have already developed well-formed tails. Good, the above concludes the reconstruction process of Uran the Guijo ichthyosaurus. Thank you all.